In this video, I'm gonna show you one of the most counterintuitive ways to keep your flowers blooming, and that is cutting them off. That's right, we are talking about deadheading, which is a pretty simple process. It's really just removing these spent blooms from flowers to spur further growth. It's kind of a subset of pruning, and you can do it with snips like this, or if you want to, you can do it with your hands. Which method you use depends on the plant. So let's take a look at these poppies. Here are the stages of this plant. You have the unopened flower stalk right here. So this is yet to open up into a poppy. Of course, you have these beautiful pink poppies right here. But then over here, you see this sort of sad looking stripped bare sort of remnant effectively. And what's happening now in the plant's life cycle? Well, what do plants want to do? They want to reproduce. So what would be inside this right here? It would be poppy seeds. So if you don't want to save it for seed, what's this plant doing producing this stem, keeping this stem alive, and then maturing all of the seeds in this pod? Well, for the purposes of beauty, it isn't really doing anything at all. And that's where deadheading comes into play. You're sort of saying, hey plant, hey poppy, I want to redirect your energy towards the thing I want you to do. I actually don't want you to produce seeds. So if I come down here and pop this stem off, poppy is a really satisfying one because it's sort of hollow and rigid and it kind of just easily pops off. And if I come in and really open up this seed head for you, what you can see is all of this. It almost looks like salmon row. These are the poppy seeds. These are immature poppy seeds that are still forming and plant energy is being spent to grow all of this, which I just don't want. I'm not gonna save these poppy seeds. You could, and in that case, let it grow and let it mature. But in my case, I wanna give these guys their best shot at producing. So I'm coming through, and in the case of poppies, you just come through, it's very satisfying. Just snap that bottom off, and there you go. And it gives a nice clean look to the plant. But the other thing I wanna call your attention to is, it's called deadheading. You might think you just come through and just do this. And that's true on some plants, but in the case of the poppy, it's not going to throw any more growth out right here. So I might as well take off this entire stem. It's, it's not doing anything productive whatsoever. And just take a look at how pretty this plant looks when you do clean it up a little bit. If you want, you can also take almost spent flowers. This one's just about done here. And there you go. I have a lot cleaner setup here. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous, but there's more to learn about deadheading. So let's head over here. When you're deadheading, you need to make sure you're working with clean, sterile and sharp tools. So I'm gonna show you how we sharpen them really quickly using three-in-one oil, which is the stuff we've been using for about five years now, sponsor of today's video. So what I like to do is I just throw some oil on the blades and I also throw it on the gear set if it's a little bit rusty. In this case, maybe I left this out a little bit too much, you know, forgive me, forgive me. And then what I like to do is come in with a wire brush on the gears and give that a quick brush just to get some of that built up rust off. It's a lubricating oil, but it's also helpful for de-rusting and cleansing the, the tool itself. When I get to the actual blades, I don't really want to use something as abrasive as this brush. So I'll use this little sort of block here. It really makes short work of some of this built up debris. Even some of the sap can come off here. It's really nice. If you want to think about a better way to store your tools so they don't even get to this point is grab a bucket of like builder sand and pour a bunch of three-in-one oil in and mix it into the sand and then you can store your tools blade side down in there and they just won't be exposed as much so they won't oxidize and they will not rust. So I've got it all lubed up, my final step. So I'm gonna take my sharpening block now and I'm gonna do a few passes on the cutting edge just like this, give it a final wipe. And now it's time to figure out how to deadhead with his newly lubricated tools. Over here at my little Dahlia section that I have to say is really beautiful, it's a little bit of a different setup. Not as easy to snap off, but take a look. This is a stem that has bloomed and has started to close back up. If I was to come down and cut the whole thing off, I'd actually be cutting off these two heads right here, which I really don't wanna do. So in this case, I wanna trace it down to the lowest point of the spent stem and just remove that. Now this isn't so much true on dahlias, but another good reason to deadhead is if you have a flower that really likes to spread its seed and you don't want it to, a good time to deadhead, of course, would be at this point because you know then you're gonna remove its ability to kind of spread itself all over the garden. So it's not only a cleanup move, but can also prevent you from having effectively an unwanted weed at that point in time because the flowers can go all over the place. Here in the rose patch, this is one of the best bushes I've ever grown, fragrant cloud. Smells 
absolutely amazing, but they are starting to get a bit spent. And so deadheading for roses can help spur growth, but also can help sort of clean the plant up before the petals get all over the place. So coming through, this one obviously has already had its time, but you can see, you know, this one's basically done. And yeah, I could try to enjoy this beauty a little bit longer, but the petals are starting to go everywhere. I just want to trace it down to the node and cut it off. Again, if I cut it off a little lower, I'd lose this guy, which still has maybe a day left of beauty. And roses are so precious to me that I'm going to take every day they've got. Now, there are some plants that are incredible deadheading candidates, as well as ones that aren't. So let's start off with the ones you really should be deadheading. Marigolds, snapdragons, roses, blanket flowers, zinnias, sweet peas, any annual that has multiple blooms over the season. Then you have some of these perennials that you really want to avoid chopping off. I'm talking foxgloves, fuchsias, hollyhocks, and lobelias, because that's how they recede themselves for next year. Then at a broader level, as you get from late summer into fall, you really don't want to chop all of your flowers down because that's the natural forage and habitat for the wildlife that you're trying to cultivate in your garden. So while you can do it with your annuals throughout the season to prolong blooms, as you get closer to the end of the year, leave that stuff alone. You're gonna see way more wildlife in your garden as a result. If you wanna mess around with some fun flowers, check our seed company out, Botanical Interests. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.